Israel, Israel had been delivered from the land of Egypt under Moses. We all know the story. God had sent Moses to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. He said, Moses, I have come down to bring them out, to take them up, to take them in. And that generation that had been delivered from Egypt under Moses, they wandered in the wilderness. We know the story for 40 years. They didn't make it in. God came down. God brought them out. God brought them up. But they refused to go in. I love it when Juanita looks at me with, the, with those looks. Like, like, Pastor, where you going with this? And so th the scripture said in, 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 in Joshua chapter 1, if you're taking notes, you can write that down. And, uh, but it said in Joshua chapter 1, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, God spoke to Joshua. So Moses was used by God to bring the children out of Egypt. They didn't make it in. So God sent Joshua after the death of Moses to take the people into the land. So we have the book of Joshua, which records the, the stories of the generation that went into the promised land and how God had given them possession of the land. So that generation that we read about under Joshua, that generation did make it into the land under Joshua. Y'all with me? Amen. Now, in Judges chapter 1, you can turn there because we need to get to Judges 6, but I, I want you to kind of understand what, what, what's, what's going on here because it does apply to, to our lives. You know, one wonderful thing about the, the word, and um, I've had some discussions this week in, in, in some of my classes about how do we read Scripture, how do we apply scripture? You know, it's not just we're reading old stories about stuff that happened thousands of years ago that has no relevancy to our lives today. We had a very interesting conversation about that. Of course, they thought I was a little border, but that tends to be the case. But we can, we, can, we can read these stories and we can see the application of the principles and apply them to our lives and benefit from the word of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Amen. All scripture, old and new, it's, 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 it's all relevant. When Judges chapter 1 says, now after the death of Joshua, the Israelites asked the Lord, who of us? is to go up first to fight against the Canaanites. So Moses has been used to bring the people up out of the land. Moses died. God spoke to Joshua. Joshua took the people in. The people received their inheritance in Joshua, uh, 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 the book of Joshua. But now Joshua is coming to the end of his days. Y'all with me? Joshua chapter 2, verse 6. Or Judges chapter 2, I'm sorry, verse 6. It says, after Joshua had dismissed the Israelites, they went to take possession of the land, each to their own inheritance. So the people, the people served the Lord throughout their lifetime and throughout the lifetime of Joshua and of the elders who outlived him and who had seen all the great things the Lord had done for Israel. Let me read that again. The people, verse 7, served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and of the elders who outlived him and who had seen all the great things the Lord had done for Israel. Now, Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110. They buried him in the land of his inheritance at Timnath of Harris in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gaash. Now, verse 10, after that whole generation, somebody say whole generation. I often say 
God deals with generations. After that whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. You get the picture. First generation died in the wilderness. Second generation entered into the land, received their inheritance. They died. The next generation that grew up, grew up without a knowledge of the Lord. Something is not right. If the first generation didn't make it in, but the next generation that grew up made it in, the next generation should have received the blessing of the generation that made it in. Would you agree? Amen. But that generation grew up without any knowledge of the Lord. We need to find out what happened. Verse 11. Then the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and they served the Baals. They forsook the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who had brought them out of Egypt. They followed and worshipped various gods of the people around them, and they aroused the anger the, of the Lord because they forsook him. They, they, they left God. <laughs> and they served Baal and the Ashtaroth. So in his anger against Israel, the Lord gave them into the hand of raiders who plundered them. He sold them into the hands of their enemies all around whom they were no longer able to resist. Now, whenever Israel went out to fight, this is not a good picture. The hand of the Lord was against them. Now, if there's one thing I don't want is for the hand of the Lord to be against me. See, I want the hand of the Lord to be with me, not against me. As Sis said earlier, I want the Lord opening doors for me, not closing them. Because when God starts closing doors, can't no man open them. But when God opens the door, ain't no man can close them. So whenever Israel went out to fight, hand of the Lord was against them to defeat them. Just as he had sworn to them, they were in great distress. Now, now, now watch the grace of God at work. Verse 16. Then the Lord raised up judges who saved them out of the hands of the raiders. So God didn't just leave them in this condition. God will never leave us. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's what he said. He will never leave us. And although Israel turned against the Lord, uh, God didn't leave them. Now, they suffered some stuff, but they didn't suffer because it was the will of God that they suffered. They suffered because they refused to do what God instructed them to do. God had already told them, when you go into the land, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, you'll be fine. Now, if you break the covenant, however, this is what's going to happen. Now, either they didn't believe it or they wanted to try it for themselves because they broke it. And they reaped the results of breaking the covenant. Are y'all with me? So this wasn't, you know, it wasn't God. Just, you know, God upset because they serving another God. So God is, is angry with them just because, like, he has some kind of insecurity issue. No, God was upset because with everything that he had promised, he said, look, I'm setting before you life and death, blessing and cursing, good and evil. Choose life. They chose the opposite, and they got what they chose. And God was probably sitting up in heaven. I'm using my sanctified imagination, just looking out at him and saying, mm, mm, mm. I, try, I, told, I tried to tell him. So he said, but you know what? They my people. I can't leave them in that condition. So I'm going to raise up some judges. Verse 16 said, the Lord raised up judges who saved them out of the hands of the raiders, yet, what's wrong with these people? Yet, 
They would not listen to their judges, but they prostituted themselves to other gods and worshiped them. Now, unlike their ancestors, they turned quickly from following the way of their ancestors, the way of obedience to the Lord's command. So whenever the Lord raised up a judge for them, he was with the judge and saved them out of the hands of their enemies as long as the judge lived. <laughs> For the Lord relented because of their groaning under those who oppressed and afflicted them. But when the judge died, the people returned to ways even more corrupt. Now, <laughs> you have to ask, what's wrong with these people? God raises up a judge, delivers them. As long as the judge is around, judge really means deliverer, deliverer or savior. So God raises these judges up. You know, like De Deborah, y'all heard of Deborah? She was, she was a judge, and, and Othaniel, and Ehud, and Shemagar, and all of these different judges. God would raise up these judges. The judge would deliver them out of the hand of their oppressors. They would walk in obedience as long as the judge was with them. As soon as the judge died, they went back to doing what they were doing before. But the scripture says they were more corrupt. Because when you go back to something that you've been delivered from, you're worse. You know, Jesus gave an illustration about a man that, that, that got delivered from a devil. And, and, and he said, you know, here's the thing about an unclean spirit. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a person, he goes around in desert places. And since he can't find no rest, he says, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to the house that I came out of. But he goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked than him. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. And, and, and we're seeing this happening here with the children of Israel. Aren't y'all glad that y'all not a part of this group? Amen. Amen. Verse 19, when the judge died, the people returned to ways even more corrupt than those of their ancestors, following other gods and serving and worshiping them. They refused to give up their evil practices and stubborn way. They refused. God said, can't y'all see? That's what God's telling them. He said, can't y'all see that the ways that you're choosing are not benefiting you? So I'm going to let you realize that they're not benefiting you. Then when I think you might have got the lesson... Then I'm going to raise up a judge, I'm going to deliver you, and then maybe you'll walk right. So God, in, because God is a God of grace, amen. God is a God of grace, and his word don't lie. So now that I think you might have gotten the lesson, I'm going to send a judge. The judge will raise you up and deliver you and set you back in the walking in the blessing of the Lord. And they said, okay. So they walked in the blessing of the Lord, then the judge died, and they went right back to doing what they were doing before. Human nature is an interesting thing. Judges chapter 6, I'm closing. The Israelites did evil. You know, I almost get tired of reading that passage when I read in the Scripture, the Old Testament, the Israelites did evil. Israelites rebelled. Israelites turned from the Lord. You know, yeah, you know, over and over and over and over and over. It's like, when will these folks learn? Some folk never learn. Bless them. The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Now, now note, by the time we get to, to, to Gideon, in Judges chapter 6, they've gone through like four or five different judges. This is not the first time that, that this is happening. They've been through some 